Professor Dave and Chegg here. We already know about particular units of measurement, as well as the way we report precision in those measurements. We also understand how to do calculations with those measurements. But sometimes we will also want to convert between different units of measurement. We may want to do this simply so that we can express a quantity in a different way. For example, what if we were to ask how many seconds there are in one year? This is probably something most of us don't think about, but we may need to know for one reason or another. To convert one year into seconds, we will use something called dimensional analysis. So let's learn how to do this now. When we perform dimensional analysis, we take some value, the value that we wish to convert, and we multiply it by one or more fractions that are equal to one. These fractions must be equal to one because we don't want to change the magnitude of the value. We only want to change how it is expressed. Multiplying something by one doesn't change the magnitude of the value. But if the one we multiply with is actually a fraction, meaning that we put things on the top and bottom that are different but equal to each other, then we can change the way our value is expressed. So in the case of one year, let's think critically. What are some conversion factors we are aware of? Well, everyone knows that there are 365 days in a year. In other words, 365 days equals one year. Those are the same length of time. So if we put 365 days up here and one year down there, this fraction does equal one. But if we multiply one year by this fraction, we can see that the units themselves cancel out, just like an algebraic variable, and we will be left with 365 days. Let's continue with conversion factors just like this, but use ones that convert this value into hours, then minutes, and then seconds. We are left with some basic arithmetic to do, whereby we can see that all the units cancel out except seconds, and we just multiply the numbers to get our answer. We have successfully taken a particular measurement of time and converted it into a different unit using dimensional analysis, such that it can be expressed another way. We can do the same thing for any other units we can think of, including derived units, such as converting kilometers per hour into meters per second. In doing this, let's be aware that some values are actual measurements which have significant figures that need to be taken into account when doing calculations. By contrast, the number of meters in one kilometer is exactly 1,000. That particular 1,000 has an unlimited number of sig figs, since it is not a measurement, so it will not limit the certainty of your calculation. Let's try an example of this type of conversion. The speed of light is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. What is this in kilometers per hour? We will have to replace meters with kilometers and seconds with hours. Let's do the distance first. We have meters on top, so we need to multiply by 1 kilometer over 1,000 meters. Then, to get rid of seconds, we can say 60 seconds over 1 minute and 60 minutes over 1 hour. All the units we don't need will cancel out. We do the arithmetic and we get around 1.1 times 10 to the 9, so about a billion kilometers per hour. So we can see that this process will be quite straightforward for any conversion we wish to perform. We just have to know the conversion factor, or the two things that go on the top and bottom of these fractions, and then just make sure that we place them in the correct order so as to cancel out the units the way we want. We can do more sophisticated calculations with dimensional analysis than mere conversions. We can do actual computation in a problem-solving context this way as well. This is a useful tool because sometimes we will encounter a problem that seems very complicated but is actually very simple if we just write out values with their units and figure out how to do a calculation that will give us an answer in the units we want. Let's try one example of this. Say your car gets gas mileage of 10 kilometers per liter and you drive an average of 15,000 kilometers per year. Assuming that gas remains precisely $1 per liter, how much do you spend on gas each year? So we have a few values to play with. We want to know how much is spent per year, and this is based on how far you drive. So let's start with that distance. 15,000 kilometers per year. How many liters of gas is that? 
Well, it's 10 kilometers per liter, but we can just as easily invert this to get one liter over 10 kilometers. This is useful because then kilometers cancel and we have liters per year. But let's go ahead and take care of the other conversion too. We know that gas costs $1 per liter, so let's multiply by this conversion factor as well so that liters cancel and we get an answer in dollars per year, which is precisely what we were looking to figure out. We do the math and we get $1,500 spent in gas every year. So as we can see, all we did was start with a known value and multiply by conversion factors that cancel out existing units. As long as we put the conversion factors in the right configuration, we will typically end up with some kind of useful information. So now we know how to use dimensional analysis in order to convert from one unit or set of units to another unit or set of units. And we also applied this to solving simple problems. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.